I want to go through the mental capacity defences. So in this video, I'm going to go through insanity or insane automatism and non-insane automatism, which most people just refer to as automatism. So um, these defences are where a person is saying that they shouldn't be guilty of an offence because of their mental state. So they didn't have the intent to commit the crime um, because their mind was affected by something else. And it's either got to be an internal cause, so something like a medical condition, or an external cause. Um, if it's internal, then we use insanity. So that's really easy to remember because they're both in, internal insanity. Um, and if it's something outside, it's automatism. And automatism sounds very much like the word automatic. So it's you're almost saying that you acted automatically beyond your conscious control. You couldn't decide what you were doing because of, of something affecting your mind at the time. So um, what sort of things would you go for? And um, what's the effect of each defence? So if you argue insanity, then um, the verdict that will be returned is NGRI, which stands for not guilty by reason of insanity. So um, kind of, I think back before the, the 90s, it would have to be um, an automatic hospital, uh, hospital order, sorry, which meant that this wasn't a very popular defence for people to run because if if they used insanity, they, they were going to be locked up in... Um, you know, probably an insane asylum and that just makes me think of Batman and oh, an asylum and stuff, not not pleasant. Now, of course, the judges have um, more of a range of things that they can choose depending on the circumstances. So, of course, they can still give a hospital order. So, for example, if we have a person who's suffering from schizophrenia and they're really dangerous, then it might be appropriate that they are um, seconded to a, a, a mental institution, a hospital to help them. Um, it could just be a supervision order, so it might be appropriate for that person just to sort of check in periodically with the probation service. And again, it's more just to make sure that they're not a danger to themselves or society. Or it could be that the person receives an absolute discharge, that on reflection, it's not really appropriate to charge them with anyone with anything. So, um, uh, sorry, to sentence them with anything. So it could be something like a, a person who's sleepwalking or diabetic. They're probably not going to be a danger to themselves assuming of course they have their condition back under control so the, the judge can choose and the um the rules are based on the case of norton it's a silent m so the case of norton um back in 1843 so very long time ago and and that's why the um the defense is, is quite old-fashioned we probably wouldn't label people as insane anymore but the, the law still works that way so as you can see by the stars, there are three elements that you have to prove for insanity, which makes it nice and straightforward to apply to a problem scenario. Um, so the first thing that you have to look for is defective reason. And you'll see actually that these three points are very, very similar to diminished responsibility, which is the special defence to murder only. They work in similar ways, but of course, diminished responsibility was updated by the Coroners and Justice Act in 2009. So the language is a lot more up to date. So we need a defective reasoning and basically that a person's reasoning was affected or impaired. Um, they weren't thinking like an ordinary person at the time. And it has to be more than um, being confused or absent minded. Um, we, we saw this in Clark where um, they, they were debating this when um, she'd, uh, she was diabetic and suffered from depression and she'd taken some items from a supermarket. And they felt it was more than kind of, you know, being preoccupied. You know, if you've had a busy day and you've got lots of things on your mind, you might accidentally do something like accidentally forget to pay in a supermarket. Um, but th this was more than that. Um, it has to be caused by a disease of the mind. Um, and again, you know, diminished responsibility is a, is a lot more sort of modern in their use of kind of recognised medical conditions. Disease of the mind can be a bit misleading. Um, so just a couple of things to bear in mind it has to be internal as we said right at the start and um when it's disease of the mind it can be a mental condition um but it can also be something that's physical that affects the mind so for example in kemp he had a heart condition and his heart condition caused his arteries to harden it affected his his brain and his mental functioning. So so he wasn't thinking at the side at the time. He had a temporary sort of loss of consciousness where he was just 
acting automatically and he um, attacks someone with a hammer. So it has to be more more than that confusion. It has to be caused by something that is affecting your mind and your mental processes. So that clearly would. So just maybe a couple of things to start with, as you can see in red, I've got things that aren't classed as um, insanity. And this is because they are external. So medication, yes, you take medication for an internal medical condition, but if it's actually the medication that causes you to um, be impaired, then you should be trying automatism instead and not insanity. So we, we saw that in the case of quick. So you'll commonly get people suffering from diabetes in a problem scenario just because um, they're, they're quite easy to mix up. So if you think that person is um, acting strangely and is committing crimes um, without meaning to, and it's because they've taken maybe too much insulin or too much of their medication, then that is not insanity. Because even though it's for a disease of the mind, diabetes is seen as a disease that affects the mind, then it's actually the medication that's making them ill. Um, it also won't work in Corley. So again, they found that Corley was cannabis. He'd taken the cannabis. So as, although his mind was affected, it's not being caused by a disease of the mind. It's being caused by a mind altering substance, which he has taken. So it's an external cause which he has taken. So again, Corley wouldn't work for insanity. So what sort of things do? Um, Sullivan, Sullivan was an epileptic. This this was able to succeed. Um, sleepwalking um, in Burgess. And it's really important to, to note that things like sleepwalking must be due to an internal sleep disorder, which they said it was in Burgess. It wouldn't count if you were sleepwalking because um, I don't know, you'd, you'd eaten something or you'd um, been hit on the head or something like that. It has to be caused by an me internal medical condition. Um, and I've already mentioned diabetes um, in Hennessy. So the key to be able to use um, the defense of insanity if you are a diabetic is that it's the diabetes that has made you go into a hyperglycemic coma. What that means is you've probably either not taken enough insulin to combat your illness. So it's not the medication that's making you ill. It's still the illness that's making you ill. It's just that you've not taken enough of the medication to help yourself. Um, or you've eaten too much food. So um, the, the sugars in food pl pushes the blood sugar higher. People with diabetes can't naturally combat this. So what happens is their, their blood sugars go up and up and up until, again, they fall into a hyperglycemic coma. Lastly, the effect of this must be that it either causes you to um, not understand your actions. So, for example, you wouldn't know the nature and quality of your act if you're sleepwalking, for example. You just wouldn't know what you're doing. And um, we've seen this in cases like OI. Um, or... This one's a bit more controversial, that you um, knew what you were doing, but you didn't understand it would be breaking the law. Um, so in Windle, for example, he knew that he would get in trouble for um, sort of um, attacking his wife, giving her, given, sorry, not attacking his wife, giving her loads of aspirin uh, to, to attempt to, to commit suicide. He clearly understood that what he was doing was legally wrong, so he wasn't insane. So um, it, it could be, for example, that you think you're morally right um, and that you're doing it, it, it's perfectly fine. And for example, if you're schizophrenic, you may not understand the, the difference or if you have um, perhaps um, a learning impairment, so you don't quite understand that what you're doing is against the law, then it would be classed as insanity. But if you know what you're doing is legally wrong, then clearly the law tells you, the law expects you to not do it. So that's all um, internal. What about things that are external? So a couple of the things that I've touched on would actually come under this. Um, so automatism is a complete defense with no caveats. So if you manage to argue automatism, then you'll simply be not guilty. Um, you'll walk through. So um, just really simple, actually. There's kind of two main elements that you're looking for. Um, is that 
first off, it must be an external cause. So remember, if it's internal, you would have to use the defense of insanity. And even though this, that maybe carries a stigma with it, um, you'd have to use that. So we're kind of trying to get some um, ideas of what this could involve. So the case of Bratty talked about perhaps um, muscle spasms, um, convulsion, um, things that we aren't doing. Um, so or sleepwalking, for example, that's caused by maybe eating something bad, having nightmares, those sorts of things. Those would be classed as external factors, as long as it's not caused by an internal medical condition. Um, Hill versus Baxter, the High Court in their Orbit Addicta, they talked about some examples and they used um, the quite famous example of, oh, what if you were driving and attacked by a swarm of bees, you know, and you suddenly kind of um, lose control of the steering wheel and crash into somebody. That would be a case of automatism because it wasn't a conscious choice that you did. It was kind of a, an, a reaction to an external cause, the, the bees. Um, other examples, you know, someone hitting you on the head and, and that causes you to go into a sort of unconscious state um sneezing you know if you if you sneeze really violently and i don't know you um you knock something into somebody and hurt them that or, or bump into them or whatever that could potentially be automatism um hypnotism would be caused by an external factor um taking drugs and medication although with drugs you would look at um the rules specifically around intoxication which i'm going to look at in my next video um so it has to be something external. R versus T is um, quite a strange example at first because um, she suffered from PTSD, which seems like an internal disorder. But remember, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, is triggered by something specifically. And hers was triggered by a rape. So that was clearly an external cause, something that has been done to her that has made her have that illness. So it's not just something that was that was internal and inherent to her. It has been done to her. Um, the other thing is that it has to cause a complete total loss of control. So if you're you are looking for signs that they still knew what they were doing, and again, if they know what they're doing, then they shouldn't do anything against the law. So we're looking for they've totally lost control. Now, in the case of Attorney General's reference number two of nineteen ninety two. Um, he, he was kind of saved by the jury who decided not to convict but the strict letter of the law said that he had um uh it, it's called driving without awareness so if you're driving down a long road and you kind of zone out um he argued that he'd lost control because he'd sort of zoned out and veered into the the side of the road and the court said well he hadn't totally lost control because he was still driving he was still in control of the car even if you sort of in in that in that state so zoning out is probably not going to be enough it must be a total loss of control where essentially you are not in control of what you're doing um the the final sort of key big question to look out for in a scenario question is what if actually um on review you think they did it to themselves so they put themselves in that state so for example if you volunteer to be hypnotized or if <coughs> you take the medication you take the drugs um what if what if you brought it on yourself now the key thing that you need to check and decide is what sort of crime is the person being charged with so we've got crimes that are split into two types so specific intent crimes and basic intent crimes specific intent crimes are the ones that can be committed by intent only like section 18 grievous bodily harm it has to be intent to cause serious harm Basic intent are those crimes that allow intent or recklessness. So any time you're talking about recklessness, it's a basic intent crime. So battery, of course, is causing unlawful force to another and you either intended or you were reckless. Now, if they're charged with a, with a specific intent crime, the idea is that the defendant lacks intent because, as we said, they were in a total loss of control. They didn't intend anything because they were unable to think so if they're unable to intend, then they can't have the mens rea and therefore they would be not guilty. It would actually be a defence. So for Section 18, Grievous Bodily Harm, you wouldn't be able to show that they intended to cause serious harm if that person, for example, is um, being attacked by a swarm of bees. They, they, just, they just don't have that thought process. However, if it's a basic intent crime, again, they wouldn't intend, but they might be reckless. 
And basically what the court says is, if you realise there was a risk that you would go into that automatic state and you do it anyway, then you are therefore realising there's a risk that you could commit a crime within that. So you are reckless for that crime. So we've got cases like Bailey, for example. Bailey was a diabetic who failed to eat enough after taking his insulin. So the insulin was pushing and pushing and pushing his blood sugar down into a hypoglycemic coma. He knows that this can happen. He knew it would happen if he didn't eat enough. So he put himself into that state. So while he didn't intend to hurt anybody, hit him over the head with an iron bar, while he didn't intend to do that, he realised there was a risk that he would drop into a hypoglycemic coma if he didn't eat enough after taking insulin. And therefore he was reckless. He realised the risk that he would be out of control of his actions and, and he could do something like attack somebody. We, we see Corley here as well, of course, because going back to that case, he couldn't use insanity because he'd taken cannabis. That's not an internal um, condition. And in this case, he couldn't use automatism either because he'd taken the cannabis voluntarily. So because he was reckless, he realised that there was a risk that by smoking cannabis, he wouldn't be in control of himself. He is therefore reckless of the crime that he's committed. The only exception to this is you, if you don't realise the risk. So if you don't realise, for example, um, that you're taking cannabis, so for example, if you were eating, I don't know, brownies that someone had laced with drugs, then that might not be the case here. You don't realise there's a risk you can go into that automatic state when you eat them. In Hardy, he'd taken antidepressants and he didn't realise that there was a risk that they could affect him. So because he didn't realise the risk of the drugs being effect, that having that effect on him, he couldn't be reckless getting into that state and therefore he couldn't be reckless for committing the crime that he did within that. So um, I hope that helps. I'm going to do a separate short little summary video on intoxication because there are some specific rules, but they're very, very similar to, to self-induced automatism. So if you understand that, then you should be absolutely fine with intoxication as well. Thanks for watching.